大家好 ，I'm Nathan Rich, aka 火锅大王。I've been researching a video series that I'm very passionate about, and I haven't had much time to make videos recently. But I became aware of something I just had to talk about. There's almost no coverage of this in the West at all, and I just can't let this go by unnoticed. I want to talk to you about the abusive practices of American aviation schools against Chinese students. They've gotten so bad now that they've literally caused death. Just like how in America students can become victims to payments for enormous student loans, international students looking for flight training can become indentured servants in America. Airline companies form agreements with college students, for example, a 15-year employment contract, and they pay to send the student to an aviation academy, pay for their living expenses, and for all their very expensive training. But here's where things can get dark. Students who don't pass their training may very well be in violation of their contractual agreements with the airlines. A breach of contract means the student has to pay back the extreme costs incurred. It means he has wasted years in college. It means facing the shame of telling his family he's not going to be a pilot after all. And on top of that, he's put them all in debt. It makes sense that the airline would want their money back if the student doesn't finish. And the whole thing actually works pretty well when aviation academies create a professional, appropriate environment for the students to thrive in. But what about when companies don't help the students thrive? More and more, we're finding evidence that predatory aviation training companies take advantage of the situation the student is in and turn their facility into an oppressive nightmare. The students struggle through the training, terrified that at any moment, for any reason or no reason at all, a sadistic staff member will fail them. Sadistic Aviation Academy leadership in America—that sounds pretty far-fetched, right? New tonight: a bizarre plot uncovered. A pilot and his assistant arrested for allegedly kidnapping and trying to deport a Chinese student at their flight school. Last year, Iasco Flight School's general manager and his director of administration were charged with kidnapping, first-degree residential burglary, and false imprisonment by violence against a Chinese student. They specifically took advantage of his status as a foreigner. Luckily for the student involved, he made an audio recording of the incident. Let's take a listen. If you cannot speak English, you are not going to be stay here. You are in our custody. You're in my fucking custody right now. I will forcibly remove your ass from here. I've got your fucking passport. There it is. I'll break your fucking arm. You better believe I'm fucking threatening you. You're gonna fucking go. Fuck you. This is bad for you. Fuck you. I will fucking beat you. At the time of the incident, there were already many formal legal complaints against the school, including for failure to provide rest and meal breaks, failure to pay minimum wage and overtime, and more. These are Chinese students facing a modern form of slavery in the heart of America. After the incident, the Iasco staff returned to work, went to court a few times, and just recently received their sentence: 60 days of electronic monitoring and probation for one of them, and nothing for the other. They're totally fine now. Back to their life of owning servants. Disgusting. But it's not just Iasco abusing Chinese students. In April, there was a tragedy in Texas. Because the West is not reporting on this incident, many details are based on Eastern reporting, online testimonials from people close to the situation, and documented interviews with classmates and the victim's mother. This story is as accurate as we can get it from this kind of data. A 22-year-old student of Nanjing University of Aeronautics and Astronautics named Mr. Yan got a contract with Shenzhen Airlines, which sent him to America for training at the U.S. Aviation Academy in Texas, also referred to as USAG. His fellows described him as generous, modest, enthusiastic, and kind. Even while smiling in interviews, another student tries to describe in English the immense pressure he feels to become a great pilot. My mother just.、Uh... She work around、uh, every everybody she knew. He just to talk. My my son is a pilot now. Oh, that's <laughs> you know that's really really serious. I want to be clear that Jet here is not Mr. Yan. As far as I know, Jet survived the USAG. Mr. Yan did not. On the evening of April fifteenth, two thousand nineteen, Mr. Yan quietly cleaned his apartment, which he shared with five other students. The next morning, around 6 a.m., he hung himself in the bathroom, alone and defeated. You see, when a company gets Chinese students trapped into indentured servitude, the fate of the students is at the whims of the company. 
While we can only assume most companies are responsible and caring, we now know that the U.S. Aviation Academy is neither. Mr. Yan was already behind in his training progress, at least as far back as October 2018, when he was given a review board. The USAG recommended his training be terminated. That is to say, they admitted they couldn't train him. Did he give up? No, he tried to push through the training. All he needed was the proper support structure and nurturing environment. Let's take a look at the environment for Chinese students at the USAG. I want you to imagine yourself a hopeful young man who has been sent to America after finishing college. You're risking ending your career and putting your family in debt, but they all have confidence in you. You're trying your hardest to be a pilot. After a review board recommends you go back home in shame, you try harder, and then you find your work schedule. Wake up, clean for two and a half hours with some five minute breaks. Spend two hours holding the door open for staff and other students. 30 minute lunch, clean for two and a half hours with some five minute breaks. Clean the floor, spend over an hour holding the door open for staff and other students. 30 minute dinner, spend an hour and a half cleaning followed by two and a half hours of cleaning toilets and quote, any other tasks assigned to you. That's it. On top of that, you're put on the USAG no fun list. You can't go grocery shopping or participate in fun activities. And of course, the staff member who puts you on the list is the only one who can take you off. Imagine what it feels like to be in a different country at a training program that has your passport and makes you hold doors open and clean toilets. And if you complain or fight back, you might have your entire future destroyed. And if you speak in your own language, you will be publicly shamed your face will be put on a shame wall as a warning to others. Speak English or be punished. Mr. Yan described his trainers to his mother. One had been fired and rehired multiple times, and another was a fresh graduate who only wanted to log flight time for himself, not to help students. After his most recent trainer left, Mr. Yan wasn't given another one, according to her, and apparently he sat idle for months, unable to progress. We don't know exactly how many degrading techniques the USAG used against Mr. Yan, but after four review boards, he finally had enough. He spent over a year trying to do what's been described as a smaller three month program before he ultimately committed suicide. He probably couldn't imagine throwing his future away and putting his family in debt. Jesus Christ. So how did the US Aviation Academy react to this tragedy? Well, reports from the inside are that the USAG told students not to inform Mr. Yan's family of his death, but to let them do it but the USAG never did. Instead, the students risked more punishment by informing his family anyway. This is Mr. Yan's mother talking about the incident eight days later. But other than not wanting the world to know about their abusive environment, why else would the US Aviation Group not want to do the right thing? Maybe the answer is found in the legal contract. USAG promises to pay $100,000 to the family in the event that the student dies as a result of any event or circumstances relating to the flight, training, and or aircraft rental services. So there's a $100,000 incentive for USAG to try to spin the narrative. All they have to do is convince everyone that Mr. Yan's suicide had nothing to do with them and they save a ton of money. So in the wake of this tragedy, are they admitting the truth or are they going for the cash? Let's take a look at what they're saying in public about it. Here's their Facebook. Oh, it's gone. Well, unfortunately for them, I already have their most recent post. And now you're going to see what they think about Mr. Yan, even though they tried to cover it up. We regret that Mr. Yan did not choose to end his training at several earlier opportunities and seek the advice of mental health professionals. Tragedy is sometimes unavoidable, as it was in this case. You can see they've already realized they're about to have to pay $100,000, so they've made this entire incident about Mr. Yan. It gets worse. Attached is a letter from Tyson Walker. Let's take a look. Ugh, there's a lot of mistakes in this letter. This Tyson Walker person doesn't seem to have even a high school level of English proficiency. This guy is training people? Uh, anyway, here he says it's been a difficult week. Okay, so he's acknowledging the situation. Let's hear what he has to say about Mr. Yan. We know it's part of grieving to look for answers and reasons behind the acts we don't understand. Unfortunately, this has caused false assumptions and accusations against staff and the organization itself. Wait, 
Are you saying the week has been difficult because after the death, people are accusing you of being abusive? You're saying you're the victim here? So then he says, not every student that comes to USAG will be successful. Such is the case with the student that has chosen to take his life. The fact is that student was identified as someone who consistently underperformed and failed to demonstrate the minimum standard on a consistent basis. Rest assured that there is no systemic problem at USAG that has caused this senseless act. Did anyone notice he didn't say one nice thing about Mr. Yan? He didn't offer condolences or any support or kind words to the family. All this letter says is, it was a tough week for USAG because people were mean to them. Mr. Yan was a bad student, Mr. Yan was totally at fault, and the USAG did nothing wrong and they don't need to change anything at all. What a disgusting organization. Who is this Tyson Walker moron? The Facebook post calls him the Vice President of Operations, and he calls himself the Vice President of Flight Operations, while this video calls him the Chinese team leader. Anyway, look at how the public responded to this horrible Facebook post. You guys suck. Shame on you. Disgusting company. This girl named Rachel calls them out for racial discrimination, and the reply she gets is she's accused of being a Wu Mao. It's no wonder they took down their Facebook. If you look in the West, there's not a single mention of this incident at all. That's what they're counting on. They want to delete Mr. Yan from existence entirely. They know they'll have no repercussions if the West doesn't report on it. People wonder why I talk about things like this in the West. This is why, because this tragedy is just going to be erased if I don't. It's actively being erased right now. The US Aviation Academy is a disgusting, exploitative organization that is so greedy it will victim blame a student and deny a mother information about her dead son. That's the way it looks. But we can give them every benefit of the doubt. We can say everything just happens to look much worse than it is. We can assume their intentions are totally pure. Even if that were the case, they've proven themselves so incompetent that they don't know how to manage students. They're greedy and racially insensitive and clearly don't understand how to treat foreigners or Chinese people. I mean, they literally don't even know how to spell Chinese. And just look at how pilots are talking about Chinese people in a forum thread about USAG. The learning ability with the Chinese is laughable. Of course, this is in the same sentence that the racists use the word prolly. Pay Mr. Yan's family the money you owe them. Help his mother to properly send her son off. Fix your system. Stop taking advantage of people. And one thing to my viewers, if you're in America and you're considering suicide, I've been there. I understand what you feel like. There's a hotline number you can call and talk to somebody who will help you. It may sound strange to call someone you don't know, but you actually can stay anonymous if you want, and they're trained on how to help you. I hope we never have to hear about a tragedy like this again. Thanks, everybody. See you.